Hello humans, Master Dinner Flex here, bringing you the low quality content you deserve, and today I'm going to be showing off the new Necros cards, but I I think I need to do it in two phases. Uh, phase one, or let me rephrase that, phase two is what you're expecting out of the Necros video, but phase one is uh, a very specific set of circumstances that has allowed this Necros quotations engine to be formed. <laughs> um, so... If part two is the Necros deck you're thinking it is, part one is a demonstration that it doesn't have to be. So, for this combo, we are going to start off. All we need is Advance, which, by the way, because it's a Necros monster, it's searchable with Brionic. And because it's searchable with Brionic, it's searchable with Prep. Uh, which means there are nine starters to this. Um, but when this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one Necros monster from your deck, except itself. Now, we are going to special summon Amelia from deck, and when this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Necroz Ritual Monster or Ritual Spell. We are going to add Contaster, and I will say this. This card used to be, unapologetically, the worst Necroz monster. Uh, because this card, all, all the, if you don't know, all Necroz monsters, or the, the vast majority of Necroz monsters, have an effect when they're on the field and Ritual Summoned, and they have an effect in the hand. This one on the field is nothing but Catastrophe for Extra Deck Monsters, which is not that impressive. Even 10 years ago, it wasn't that good. Um, however, its in-hand effect sounds much better, which is you can discard it to target a mon Necroz monster in your graveyard and special summon it. That sounds pretty good. Except the problem was, Necroz was a ritual deck, and all the rituals must be ritual summoned. So this card could only revive uh, non-ritual Necroz monsters, and prior to these two was absolutely nothing except a handful of monsters that didn't really matter that much. Um, so, this card is going to see a lot of improvement based on these cards, whether in context of this or the actual deck list, just because these are very important to have access to and have access to on the field. But let's take a look. We have two level fours on board, um, so let's not play Necroz. So we activated prep to get Brionic to get this, let's just say that. And we are going to go ahead and summon King of the Fair Lynx, detach a monster, and that will get us Gigabyte. And next we will discard the Cataster to revive uh, one of them, which we can now summon Gigabyte because we control a Spellcaster, which we can then overlay into, of course, Bahamut Shark, which summons, of course, Toad. And then we will overlay these two rank fours into the classic Utopic and Utopic Future. Now, um, as you can see, Without playing a single Necroz card, I have established bordering on the shark's win condition. <laughs> um, so this is really hilarious. So Necroz have been given the mo one of the most effective rank four engines I've ever seen in my entire life. Because when we talk about rank four engines, most of the time they either lock you out into only XE summoning or they only put two level fours on board and they usually require a Garnet in the process. But with this engine, the only true Garnet is uh, Cataster. Ignoring this, because let's assume you're playing this in something that's actually real. Um, it would only be Cataster, because this is a starter, this is a starter, this is a starter. And while this one isn't super effective on its own, what you can do is uh, normal summon this to search Brionic, to discard it, to search another. And this card, while it's in the hand, you can special summon it. While you have a Warrior Necroz on the field or in the grave, aka Brionic. So even this is just like... This is typically what you see in a normal rank four engine, which is like an associated garnet to get more of these. But um, hilariously, this is the only garnet of this engine, and this engine produces three level fours, not two level fours, which is another big serious thing about rank four engines that kind of end up falling off, is that at most they produce only two level fours and require garnet in the process, whereas this engine produces three level fours has many more starters and only one actual Garnet associated with it. Um, which, by the way, if you just search Brionic, if you don't have to search with Brionic, it could technically be zero Garnets in that circumstance. But that's what I'm talking about. This is uh, probably one of the more effective Rank 4 engines. And to top it all off, they're water spellcasters. Water meaning you access Toad by proxy of whatever you're going to put this in. And uh, spellcasters, that doesn't matter too much, except when it comes to the case of, I believe it's called um, Arcanite Magician, or it's the three level four spellcaster rank four monster, and it searches quick plays in the end phase, which doesn't sound very powerful, but it's any quick play in the entire game, which can be 
sometimes very scary, but I think that's hilarious. The fact that this has a uh, rank four engine that's all good typing, the probably arguably the best attribute for rank fours, I think, except exactly maybe light, is hilarious. Um, I think this engine is hilariously solid. But if you clicked on a Necros video, you probably want to see me play actual Necros now. So let's get into that. Now, unlike normal quick combos I normally do, Necros is not the kind of, oh, one card combo, two card combo deck. It is much more in the same vein as Tier Laments and many other like open-ended combo decks, which it's even hard to call this a combo deck and you'll see why soon. Um, where it really, what you're gonna do really depends on your hand and it's very open-ended and you have to actually think through your plays so you really need a, an actual hand to know what your plan is. So let's start with this. We are going to start with prep. Um, this might be a pretty simplified start. We are going to prep into Unicor because if they have Droll, I still get to have Unicor on board and that's uh, terrifying for the most part for most decks. And we're gonna start off with Kaleidoscope, dump an Arc Light, special summon the Unicor and the Unicor, uh, the Arc Light is going to search a, a ritual, which we will then get Brionac, which we will then search Advance. Now, what's really cool here is because we already have the Amelia, we can actually summon a different monster with Advance. So we will normal summon it and then go ahead and special summon Sure It, um, which is nice. It's hard to believe this card was ever banned. <laughs> I'm going to be totally honest. Um, Necroz was on its last leg and they decided to ban it. And the only thing Necroz has ever needed banned was like Unicorn Shin. Everything else was fine. Um, it turns out Floodgates are the most toxic part of Necroz, like this one. Next, we will special summon Amelia because we got Warriors, and this will allow us to search a Ritual Monster, which we will go ahead and search. Let's go with a Reed Bear. This might sound a little weird, but we are going to go ahead and activate a Reed Bear. We're going to discard it and tribute the Shuret, and that will allow us to dump the new spell which is also in my hand, uh, Divine Mirror. Now this card is very cool. It's a quick play. It's a, it's not a ritual, which does mean it has some loss of synergies. Um, like, Amelia can't search it. It has to go through Colossus to search it. Um, and Prep can't recycle it back. There's like a few quirks with it that, unfortunately, Konami has never had the genius idea of making multi-type spells for no reason whatsoever, which is unfortunate. Um, but because of that, uh, it loses out on a lot of synergies. Um, that being said, when it comes to every other part about it, it's incredibly powerful. For one, we can control monsters and we can still banish uh, it to search a ritual spell, which is kind of insane. Uh, so we will go ahead and get cycle. Um, yeah, we'll go. We'll keep cycle. Uh, and then in addition, because it's a quick play, you can use on your opponent's turn. Which, by the way. We've always made fun of Colossus needs to search a trap, but if Necros was ever going to get a trap, it would be a trap that says Ritual Summon. Uh, so it being a quick play just makes it all that much better. Um, I don't even know why you would want a Necros trap that did anything besides Ritual Summon, uh, because that allows you to trish your opponent on their turn. Uh, and this just does that and is a Ritual Spell on top of that, which is really cool. Um, let's see what we're going to do next. I searched Cycle, yeah, okay. So we are going to go ahead and toss this to search um, another ritual spell, which I guess we will get uh, Mir. And we are going to, this is unfortunate because I actually want another ritual monster. Because if this, if we had a Cataster here, it would make a lot more sense what I want to do. Um... But regardless, we need access to Toad. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to overlay the Unicorn, which, yeah, uh, we'll get it back. And then we'll detach to summon Toad, which is nice. And then when we cycle this, we get both of these back. Yeah, okay. So next, we are going to cycle and we are going to revive the Unicorn, which will allow us to get it back. And then when the advance, this is probably the most broken effect we got revealed. Uh, when this card is distributed once per duel by a card effect, you recycle all banished Necros cards to your hand, which is crazy. That is a crazy effect. But now, what we can do, technically... Um... Yeah, I think we are going to end it about here. 
because if we get this... Yeah, this is basically what we're going to end on. We're going to Necroz Mirror, and we are going to banish a 6 and a 4 to summon a Reed Bear. And now we have Extra Deck Block, Monster Negate, Omni Negate, and when this Omni Negates, we'll add back the Shuret, uh, which uh, we can go ahead and summon the Brionic to trigger the Shuret on their turn, which is honestly not a bad board. I, I was one Ritual Monster off from having a much more impressive board, but that's kind of how it is with this deck, and ultimately, it's why my opinion of this deck is it's probably not going to be a big part of the meta, if at all. Uh, basically, from the point, like, this deck is way too open-ended, and it is a very big brain deck. You actually have to think about what you're doing, and this might sound kind of condescending, but the Yu-Gi-Oh! game we are currently playing is not supportive of using brain power. Not even to be, like, rude or kind of like a, pulling a doctor house but when you actually think about it a lot of what we're doing right now is like playing these very linear one card combos and then just hand trapping our way out of the game from either our opponent's perspective or ours and a deck like this is not compatible with that uh style of gameplay that the rest of the game is doing um like if you're just two withdrawal you're ending on unicorn pass and if they have any monster over 2300 that outs it like that's kind of what i mean is this deck uh, is too smart for the game it's kind of put in, even though it's like had a history with being a really degen floodgate deck, it still requires you to think a lot about what you're doing. And in the game where you're just hand trapping your opponents to sleep with like uh, consolidating down the game state with one for ones, it's not really that compatible with it. So unless we see a major shift in how the game is being played, I'm not very certain this deck will be very good, which is crazy because this deck is really powerful, but it, it asks a very specific player, and it might also ask for a very specific type of gameplay that isn't around right now. But, no idea what the future holds, but that's gonna be it for me. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and hopefully I gave a decent demonstration with the actual Necroz deck itself, because, like, it's very interesting. I, I do like um, this new direction, because prior to this, it was very hard for Necroz to be much of anything besides just a Vanities Ruler gate do nothing deck but uh with with this new support there's like an actual strategy and if that fails if that fails we have one of the best rank four engines ever introduced for no reason <laughs> i guess like if necros doesn't do well we at least randomly got one of the most powerful rank four engines ever introduced in the game for no reason which is hilarious but that's gonna be it for me thank you all for watching and remember master dinner flex we'll take your soul